this is a funny story, and maybe this is a great way to segue into our guests because our our guests are game people, right? So do you, mm -hmm. do you want to introduce them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tonight our guests are um, designers of the game Dice Command. Um, Sam Crystal, who is the founder of Ejected Planet, um, and Tyler Holman, who is a co-designer uh, and illustrator of Dice Command. <laughs> I hope you don't get tired of hearing that song. <laughs> Definitely not already Never. exhausted of it. Mm -hmm. No. So now astute viewers will note that the order in which you came to the stage was that Sam came out first and then Tyler. So yeah, do you two want to speak to the internal hierarchy? Sam can speak to that. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I, uh, so yeah, I started Ejected Planet um, four years ago to start making games and uh, also other things. Um, and then I found Tyler, who was doing some cool game art things, and hired him. <laughs> so when you say you're the founder of Ejected Planet, you mean like you actually find people, like it's like a it's like a finder of people. You said you found Tyler. Mm -hmm. So that yes. makes sense that that's yeah. your title is founder yeah. of Ejected Planet. It's kind of like a founder. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, I was uh, lost and now I am found. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought him into the fold and now we're happily making games. Wonderful. So when you say brought it into the fold, is Ejected Planet a company or is it a cult? Mm -hmm. Which I guess those two things aren't mutually exclusive now. ML MLMs exist, but oh, how would you most describe it? We haven't launched our MLM product yet, um, mm. although we're thinking of maybe a cryptocurrency first, uh, <laughs> since that's more uh, in vogue right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely a cult um, of two members. So, that's that's all you need somewhere, right? That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tyler's devout. It's good. <laughs> I'll drink all of that Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Hi. so we did promise games, and the game I was going to segue into, uh, since Nicole brought up Cousins, is this is a game Nicole invented. I think it's really cool. So, uh, <laughs> oh, when, so Nicole uh, introduced me to one of her cousins, and her kind of preamble for who is this person is, yeah, I think she's one of my hottest cousins, or pretty much my hottest cousin, I think, was the phrasing. So... I, Let's follow that same turn order. Sam, you'll go first, and then Tyler, and then maybe Josh. Sam, who's your hottest cousin? Um, so I have I have four cousins who are all sisters and are all extremely attractive and successful. And it's just known in my family that they are the, the hot cousins. Um, there's, uh, you know, I think... One's an RN, one's an engineer, one's a teacher. You know, they're they're all killing it. Um, and yeah, so shout outs to the Ellises. I appreciate that you distanced yourself from that judgment yourself. You were like, it's known amongst our family that they're the hot cousins. You weren't like, I think they're my hot oh, cousins. Oh, yeah. I have I have an early memory of my, my mom, you know, coming in and showing me a picture of them and being like, look how pretty your cousins are. Aren't they? Aren't they pretty? And I'm like, Yes, they're very attractive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not going to build a complex of some kind. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, is that kind of the, like, scuttlebutt around the dinner table? Like, when it's Thanksgiving and everyone's gathered around and people start filing in and the kids are kind of around the table playing mm -hmm. Crazy Eights or whatever it is kids play these days. And they kind of start, yeah, dice command. They're playing dice command, and they start whispering to each other, "Oh, hey, hey are, the, are the hot cousins coming? Are the hot cousins coming? Is that kind of? Am I picking up on the vibe there?" Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, they're definitely, you know, a, a party is a seven without them, and uh, everyone's looking for that ten, right? Yeah, I can't argue with that. So. Let's move on to Tyler. Tyler, who <laughs> it's your turn to play the cousin game. So who is your hottest cousin? And as a follow-up question, are they hotter or 
is no, are they hotter than Sam's cousins? And also why? Follow-up question. I have not met Sam's cousins. Um, but the answer is probably not. <laughs> um, I I don't I don't know how to answer that. I uh, my cousins are all like Saskatchewan farm folk. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're not watching this, but can I be the hot cousin? <laughs> you can now. All right. I I will just say I'm the hottest cousin. <laughs> Amongst, yeah, among like amongst it. our family. <laughs> yeah, so with that, we'll pivot to our GM because he is, he. let's face it, if there's one person in this entire call who knows games and rules, it's Josh. So Josh, can you tell me if Tyler's answer is a cop-out? Uh, technically, I would say no because he mentioned his family's from Saskatchewan. So there's probably a little bit of inbreeding in there. So it means that you could probably be his own cousin. Mm -hmm. I said this from the perspective of a Mennonite blood person. So I've really got no moral high ground. Yeah. No judgment here. <laughs> well, I, no, Nicole, you're from Saskatchewan. Do you want to speak to that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a true story. This is not a bit. My grandma once told me about how her mother, no grandmother, um, her husband passed away, sadly, when she was, um, she said past her childbearing years, um, but I'm going to say that's like 30. Um, and so she proceeded to marry the only eligible man in town, which happened to be her uncle. So can confirm, inbreeding is a thing in Saskatchewan. <laughs> By this one example, we have now proven. <sighs> hey, that's all you need. We've got five people in a room and one person has an inbreeding story, so... <laughs> I think that's pretty good odds. That's 20% of all people here, and that's greater than the proportion of Saskatchewanites to all Canadians. So to me, that's how math works. That's just how math works. Well, let's let's take a survey. Who here is, like, ancestrally from Saskatchewan? Me. You mean born and raised there. That's You're raising your hand for born and raised there. Mm. I most certainly was not, but... As we've discussed, DeBolt is not in Saskatchewan. I, I still don't believe you, and I I never will. It's clearly a town in Saskatchewan. I've never heard of it, and that's pretty much what makes me think towns are from Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just the vibe, just the way just the way you talk about it, and, and, and kind of your vibe, you know? Like, there's there's a lot there, but I'm, I'm fairly confident. DeBolt's I don't know how I feel about that, but all right. All right, so Josh, it's your turn. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Well, so I usually don't tell these kind of cousin stories because my cousin stories usually get into like crime and meth, but I do have one cousin who is conventionally attractive, uh, but she's also an anti vaxxer, so. I knew. I knew. As soon as you were like, I'm trying to kind of put the camera on Josh. I was like, I know which cousin he's thinking about. Can confirm, yeah. she hot. But also an anti vaxxer. But also an anti-vaxxer, which is like minus points. Yeah, like I, I don't know where that puts it on the whole scale at that point. Like, because it's like anti-intellectualism, I suppose. Like you got to balance those two. Mm -hmm. But it's still better than uh, still better than Boston, robbing a Boston pizza while high on meth. So I mean, she's still not the worst cousin I have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dig into that story. Go. <laughs> I don't know how much there is to tell. Uh, if you look into... I mean, which title? Boston pizza? How much meth? Gosh. How hot is that, cousin? These are the kinds of things we need to talk about. Have you guys ever seen the show Arthur? <laughs> he like, looks a lot like Arthur from Arthur. Like the Aardvark, right? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, yeah. The Aardvark. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe Aardvark. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it was in Grand Prairie, so you can actually look up this story. I'm sorry, Mikey. Uh, if you <laughs> just look at putting him on blast, full name and everything. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, he definitely robbed the Boston Pizza in uh, Grand Prairie, so that was exciting. I mm. found out. I personally found out because someone at work was laughing about it, and then showed me the story. They're like, "Isn't that hilarious?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm related to that one." <laughs> <laughs> I always like am concerned when I see a news article that says Grand Prairie Man. Oh, I know. Like, oh, I fucking know this guy for sure. Yeah, no, there's there's been multiple like out of Grand Prairie stories. Where you're like, God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. Nah. So, yeah. Okay, so, 
So the next question was, how much meth? I have no idea. Enough mm. that he looks very fucked up on his mugshot. Mm. And how much did he make out of it? I don't think he actually made any money. Mm, that's a shame. Mm. Yeah, he was high enough that he told us he hid under a blanket and thought that the cops couldn't see him. Yeah. So pretty high. Right, you were there for that story. Yeah. Love that guy. Oh, man, Mikey's hilarious. He's just <laughs> fucked up. Hi, he's cool. Well, that's all the questions I had about that story, but we can turn it to the audience. Uh, if you have questions uh, specifically about Josh's cousin, Mike, who lives in Grand Prairie, and you can definitely look up on Facebook right now, and his, arm was it armed robbery? Uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember anymore, actually. And his potentially armed robbery, uh, allegedly, of a Boston pizza. Uh, <laughs> speak in the chat now. And speaking of the chat, we have our first comment from the peanut gallery tonight. Um, which comes from producer of the show, David. And <laughs> this is a perfect time to reveal uh, my latest banner. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks for tuning in, David. Yeah, he, he doubled our audience by tuning in. So we're, we're eternally grateful to him in every way. Ooh, who else is watching? It's not my partner. He's playing Luigi's Mansion. Three? <laughs> yes. Nice. Can does does he have enough time? Like, can you ask him who his who his hottest cousin is? I may be able to just tell you. You've been like sizing him up for years, or? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you always got to look at like next of kin. Because you're like, you know, like you like, I feel like there's like a certain percentage that your kids are going to get the hot genes, but there's like also like a percentage, like of a chance that they might not. So you got to like look at like, you know, the other gene lines that happen and the family tree. Hmm. Sure. Oh, I thought I thought you were just talking about catastrophic backup plans. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, it's like if I, you know, if we get married and I decide to change my name and my last name is already like, yeah, already that then. I may as well just go for the easiest thing. He, he does have two brothers, so, I mean, there's okay. viable options. Isn't that what it's all about, is options? Mm -hmm. Yeah, always got to have a plan B. Thanks right. for understanding, Sam. So, I think we should ask our guests a few questions about their actual game. <laughs> so, sure. um, if I could open by kind of just reading the description of Dice Command. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Fund your war engine and research powerful upgrades to ultimately deploy your army of dice to the battlefield and defeat your enemies. So it's very violent. It's kind of mean. I mean, this is, this is a war game, is it not? Yeah. So... I guess my, I'm going to use the word concern, and I don't use the word concern lightly, is this game feels like a very angry game. And I guess my question is, is this what the country needs right now? I mean, you need an <laughs> outlet, right? Uh, better, better to slaughter dice than each other. So we're helping. Like what if what if the game was what if the outlet was a nice game? Have you thought about making like nice games? I uh, thought about it, but um, yeah, no. Uh, like it, it's not a it's and it's not about necessarily glorifying violence. Um, we actually like where the war theme was kind of an afterthought. Um, funny enough, uh, we started the game started as just like uh, dice on a black piece of paper with lines on it um and then we were like this kind of feels like war and we went with that um but yeah so, so and i know you did launch your game this past saturday so for mm -hmm. a lot of intents and purposes that is kind of late in the game to make changes but you know it, we wouldn't really be ourselves if we didn't pitch you some new ideas anyway sure mm -hmm. so Dice Command let's, 2. Let's take, yeah, let's take that idea because, I mean, first off, it's right there in the name. Why not just call it Nice Command? Can we start with that? 
Sure. Yeah. Actually, uh, when when I was uh, you know backstage listening to your grandma game, uh, I was like, "That's nice." You know. So if if we make nice command, uh, I'm probably going to steal all of those ideas because they're great. I mean, that wouldn't be very nice, but it is a good idea. I I mean, I I have a bit of a talent for nice games. I did get a certificate in nice game design, you know, from university. So, you know, I'm not just I'm not just talking out my ass here. Yeah, no, uh, and we'll steal all of those. Uh, I think you're onto something there for sure. Okay, well, now that you've started, let's just let's just keep rolling with it. You can just steal all this. So, we've got nice command. We've got dice moving across the table. What, what can we maybe kind of, let's start swapping out parts. So let's say instead of a battlefield, we're in like, I don't know, Josh, what's a nice place? A nice place? Uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> not Grand Prairie. Not Grand Prairie, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's start with, let's start with where, where there's not nice place. What about like a, a meadow of nope. wildflowers? It's, it feels a bit close to a battlefield, but we could work with it. Mm -hmm. So maybe your dice are like they're honeybees and mm -hmm. their their goal is to kind of move across the battle. No, wait, move across the field of wildflowers <laughs> and like pollinate the other opponent's flowers. And if you like successfully... <laughs> Well, you know, it's just sort of, I mean, yeah, the, the intent of Are the game. Are birds in this as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so like we could that's... just call it the birds and the bees. I feel like that's a title but... that means nothing else, and we could definitely use. You'd probably rip that one off pretty solidly. <laughs> I, well, I, I did like our pun. I'm wondering if we can call it the birds and the bees, subtitle, nice command. Mm. Maybe. I, I do have a concern. Um you know, bees are slated to be extinct within probably the dev cycle of a board game. Uh, so I would be concerned that the market viability of a game that revolves around something that no one knows anymore is a little... Could the game be about saving the bees? It could be, but then the game isn't really nice. It's kind of a downer, and downers don't really sell either. Um that's, I mean, I, we did see a game in David's shop the other day um, that was about climate change. Um, mm. And I'm sure that's just flying off the shelves. I'm sure David can, can confirm that. Everyone wants, to, everyone wants to play a game that reminds you of the crushing realities of everyday life, I think. So, what was it? Oh, what was it? Just out of curiosity. Like, oh, that would be a David question. It's called uh, Tipping Point, I think. And it has oh. like a bunch of... Yeah, it has... I, th I think some wind turbines and some like refineries on it. It's, it, it just like, it emanates the worst vibes. It's kind of like a black hole of vibes, just like sucking them in. I, it, every game that was next to it, I also didn't want to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually like that. Uh, I'll probably check that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like no, no memes. Like I'll, I will check that game out. <laughs> so you admit that, that a bummer of a game is a seller. Yeah, I'm just kind of a bummer of a person, I guess. <laughs> oh. Hey, as long as you own it. As long well, as I wish yeah, I would have known it. that. Oh. I wouldn't introduce you as that. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Debbie Local Downer. bummer. Uh, local bum, bummer Sam. and game designer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That does kind of sync up, like with the war game. You know, you can just ha you could release a game that is like one for each horseman of the apocalypse. You know, you've got your war game. Uh, I guess climate change is kind of the famine game. Yep. And there's what's the other pestilence? I don't know what's what's the pe I guess pandemic is pestilence. So you could just rip off pandemic. Yeah, easy. It's already done. Just reskin. You know, just re rename it. You know. <laughs> Uh, and I feel like there's got to be a board yeah. game about that already. Oh, there's more than one. <laughs> what's what's the fourth? What's the fourth horseman? Death? The, four, the fourth horseman is yeah. death, and I also I have some concerns with that. I know you, that's kind of outside of your purview, but it it does kind of feel like it's more of an umbrella horseman for the others. I don't know if you can speak mm -hmm. to that at all. Maybe Tyler, you've been quiet that you're waiting for your moment to shine. Here, I'll spotlight you. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking of the taxonomy of the four horsemen? Would you change it? Maybe we can workshop this. 
Um, instead of death, his name could just be Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like the nice horseman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they could be going around this, this proverbial flower field we were speaking of, and they could be growing more flowers for the bees. Mm-hmm. Can we just, well, for switching one, because I feel like the three horsemen of the apocalypse and one horseman of <laughs> feeling better about it, I don't know. Like, I do love my jarring tonal shifts, but I feel like that's kind of our milieu. And I'm thinking at least if we're going to start workshop on the horsemen, can we make them all nice? Like what are the four horsemen of good, good vibes? I mean, hearty meals should be on there, right? Like something the opposite of famine. Nothing's better than just, you know, like the a, greatest meal. Like a big, like Eastern European potluck. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. I'm into that. Oh yeah. yeah. And endless. Just, but then we're back to death probably at some point. <laughs> well, okay. So if the opposite of famine is a delicious meal, uh, the opposite of war is... Goddamn hippies? Yeah. Or maybe that's bees pollinating flowers. You know, it's make love, not war. That kind of thing. So mm-hmm. you've got, the, you've got the, the horsemen of fucking... You've got the horsemen of eating... And sleeping. The opposite of pestilence. Mm. We could maybe work that in as the opposite of pestilence. The opposite of being ravaged by disease is just taking a nap. I think that scans. Yeah, I'm down for the horseman of napping. I could be the horseman of napping, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I take a power nap at work like every day, so I feel like I can appreciate that. You work in a welding shop. Where do you nap? <laughs> in my office chair when I'm on break. Oh, okay. That's I right. was literally napping before I showed up at David's store. Uh, <laughs> unintended. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about that because <laughs> we were already kind of getting into the hierarchy and the power dynamic of how this company works. So I was sort of intrigued by how that plays into it. So you seem to have a system where when people want to deal with you both collectively as a business, they message Sam and then he doesn't tell you stuff. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that would be our horseman of communication. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so my- maybe there's four horsemen of like, you know, not the apocalypse, but like mild inconvenience. And one of them is bad communication. Um, one could be traffic delays, the horseman of traffic delays. When you're sitting there, you're already like you, you, you felt like you left your house at the perfect time you're like i'm just i'm gonna slide into work like home base like perfect timing and then you get stuck behind like a semi or something that's learning how to drive and you're like fuck now i'm gonna be late mm-hmm. that definitely didn't happen today i'm I'm not pulling from personal experience here <laughs> is it too specific to have a horseman that is of when you walk into a room and then forget why you walked in <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I feel like that's, it happens really often like, enough. That... Well, you can also combine it with like going up the stairs because I I did that a million times at the old house where I'd go up the stairs and be like, I came here for something, and then walk downstairs and literally on the last stair I'd be like, right, that's why. Turn around, go right back up. <laughs> it's just your subconscious <laughs> tricking you into exercise. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I could use it. Hmm. What about know. the horseman of uh, trying to set up an internet connection for the first time? And like trying to book the appointment for the tech to come to your house. Oh man, I, that was easy mode for me. Oh god. I uh, when I moved into this apartment, my friends were giving me shit because they're like, "You haven't set up internet yet. It's not gonna be like set up for a week. How are we supposed to game and all that stuff?" And then like I just went dark for like half an hour. Came back. I'm like, I have an appointment set for tomorrow. <laughs> can, can I expand that and maybe just pitch it as the horseman of basically just all fucking technology? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if you're bad at it, yes. Yeah, well, I am bad at it, and I believe it's because I'm being haunted by, like, uh, supernatural horsemen. Well, you could be like, so, you could be like uh, technological gremlins, you know, like the World War II gremlins. So the what? Oh, that's where gremlins came from. Is that's what uh, U.S. pilots, or not just U.S. pilots, but Allied pilots, would blame on like mechanical failures they'd be like oh it was gremlins you know like the whole sarcastic joke mm. so that's sort of where gremlins came from was uh they would allegedly fuck with machinery and make it like 
super fucked up and shit like that. And that's why you mm. had like random hardware failures. So I figured you could bring that into the software era. They'd be like software gremlins now instead. So uh, as someone who has a BSc in uh, software engineering, that makes me a gremlin then, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you, are you saying you fuck up the tech, the software all the time? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Fair. That's, That's fair. on. That is partly on me, at least a little bit. It's so are you the reason that fucking StreamYard sucks and the camera setup we have at David's store sucks and well, that's uh, that everything I can't log into when I want to sucks. Like, are these all coming direct tracing back to you specifically? Uh, I mean, I would say yes. yes. No. Uh, oh. They have a saying, if it ain't broke, break it. Uh, I think I've heard that one before. <laughs> it's and so Tyler, how do you fit into that hierarchy of like are you also like a sub sub tech gremlin to him? Like are you the one coming and fucking up my Bluetooth? No, I am not a tech guy at all. I actually had to install Google Chrome before I logged in. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did that go? Um fairly smooth. Uh not not as smooth as I would have liked it to be, but I made I made it over that hurdle. We'll make it do this together. <laughs> so I guess, Sam, does that mean that you are the gremlin that made me forget to turn on my audacity and start recording this, uh, my audio remotely as well? Yes. Uh, okay. That makes yep. a lot of sense. It's okay. Kelly I'm didn't not... tell me, and as we all know, I'm illiterate, so I didn't even start it to begin with. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Well, and I don't want to point fingers, so I probably won't direct anyone's attention to the fact that I didn't tell anyone to do that. And also, that does just sound like another tech nightmare. So I may have already dropped the whole idea. This might be a Not collaboration the between the the horsemen of communication and the tech gremlins. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to make like a like a four way pie chart thing of this, or not pie chart, one of those like circle charts, but four way yeah. instead. Oh, yeah. Venn diagram. It's phase one of their policy. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Thanks, English major. <laughs> Sorry, it's five. It's the five. What? What were you saying, Tyler? Oh, I said it's phase one of their apocalypse. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was thinking that it was more of a kind of like hierarchical org chart of horsemen. So you have the horsemen of inconvenience and one of the sub horsemen of that is tech. And then with the, under that horseman, you have, I guess, four gremlins. You have like hardware, software, firmware, and shit that's just clearly haunted. I don't know, Sam. Can you speak to that? Uh, yes, um, that is all true. Uh, the the haunted ones. I mean, they're the they tend to be the like the guys who got in tech really early. The guys that are pushing like sixty, seventy now. Uh, they've got you know the the, the long gray beards and. <laughs> hang out by the water cooler and talk about technologies that we haven't even heard of. Um, but they exist and they are equally fucking shit up as we are. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished Edward Snowden's book and he is describing exactly that person. Um, yeah. In those are places. Neat. Yeah. They're awful. <laughs> so with with the time we have left, I, I wonder if we should get back to kind of finishing up nice command because they're we did kind of get off on a couple of tangents before we actually flushed out, I'm going to say most of it. <laughs> so we've got the dice. They're in a field. Are we mm -hmm. sold on the bees? Hmm. You know, like being, like if we're keeping with the rhyming theme, we could definitely go with mice. And then it could, they could be like little tiny rodents. Going after the pollen and the f in the flowers. I don't the, know. The rodents are going after the pollen in the flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my snack on that shit. It's actually kind of adorable. Look up a picture one. That's pretty cute. <laughs> as long as it's not rats, we're not allowed to have rats here in Alberta. But I don't. I, I don't actually. Game. I don't even actually know what a rat is. To be completely honest, I've I, yeah. I, I've yet to see an actual live rat in person. I saw a dead one in Vancouver, <laughs> and and it was like. It was like my Alberta brain couldn't quite comprehend what I was seeing. Like the ge gears jammed for a second. Like seeing a color that yeah, like, like it just doesn't exist sort of like, thing. Like my brain was just like, 
wow, that's a that's a really big mouse. And then like <laughs> my brain slowly started catching up. I'm like, oh fuck, that's a rat. <laughs> well, you did just out your cousin in front of all of our viewers, so that'll give you an idea of what a rat looks like. <laughs> Hey, no last name yet, so... Mm. You did tell everyone that they could definitely look him up, though. I mean, yeah, but... You could have done <laughs> that anyways. You could have just said Boston Pizza Armed Robbery and you would have found it anyways. <laughs> That's fair. So, in that note, I think we should play a game called What is your hottest cousin's last name? And this time we're going to go in reverse <laughs> order. So, Josh, why don't you go first? <laughs> I actually, uh... Because that cousin I mentioned earlier, the one that is an anti-vaxxer actually got married and I don't remember her last name because <laughs> expecting me to like remember things about my family is a fool's errand. <laughs> okay, so we've got let's let's we've got the mice, they're in a field, and what's kind of the obstacle in this game? Ideally maybe we don't even have an obstacle because it it is kind of the opposite of nice to be competing. Like, can we just have a system where you try to get the other player to win, but also you win? Isn't that kind of unrealistic to not expect competition when you play a mouse that is probably one of the most competitive existences? You have, like, 900 siblings. I yeah, can't imagine. I, I have trouble competing with two extra siblings, let alone, like, right? 900. It's, yeah, I have one. It's a nightmare. Can confirm. Mice eat each other all the damn time. Yeah. Oh yeah, you kill them for a living, Nicole. I forgot about that. I do. I do. I the things too. I don't just yeah. I don't just murder yeah. them, but yeah. So Nicole, your life is mice commands, and and I mean you're from Saskatchewan, <laughs> so you also know about rats. So why don't you kind of just like information dump on us here? Um. Right. So um, mice can only see uh, colors that are fluorescent pink. Um. They are. <clears throat> can range anywhere from the size of your pinky nail to the size of a football. Um, they can chew through anything um, from flower stems to um, wrought iron. Um, and they are the only um, amphibian with fur. Those are all true facts about mice. I learned so much. Did today. you say amphibian? Yes, I did. <laughs> You're you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, none of those things are true. <laughs> like, was literally. it was it just the last one that you picked up on? Because <laughs> like none of those are true. Wait, what were the first things you said? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like you should. I don't up, remember because I made them picked, up. Yeah, you should have mm. picked up once you mentioned that they could chew through wrought iron. Mm. Man, I believe it. I should have picked a lot of things up, but I was also busy, you know, making sure that Nicole is a focus like this. <laughs> we love you David don't leave us please God <laughs> please God be here next week <laughs> you are the glue that keeps this whole thing together mm. I mean that's definitely the uh, impression you would love you to have so okay have we finished nice command did we complete it so there's mice there's a field well, I mean like I still think we should probably have competition but the competition could be just like you know when people are, like, super passive-aggressive to each other, so they keep trying to, like, up the nice ante? Mm. So there's your competition. You're trying to be the nicest person without coming off as that passive-aggressive nice person. Be like, like you know, they're, they, you, you pissed them off, like, last week, but you don't think you deserved it, but you bring them, like, a chocolate bar anyways, and you're like, yeah, like, that's my bad. I messed up. I should have asked more. And then you give them a chocolate bar, and then the next day they're like, no, no, like... You were right to, to, to ask me that. Uh, have a Red Bull or something like that. You just have to, like, ante up, except your mice. So I don't know what you bring, like, cheese, peanut butter, um, your their dead wife that got caught in the trap. I don't know. Yeah, something to snack on. Yeah, exactly. Um, it sound, really sounds like you're speaking from experience on, like, how you handle your own personal conflicts. What is um, this, a psychology you... hour? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> next question is for Josh. Are you okay, man? Uh, in the words of every white straight guy, yeah, just living the dream. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, I like that idea, though. Can we kind of take nice command, but kind of just put nice in quotes? 
I think actually the more I think about it, maybe this is kind of taking us off the, the path that we hacked for ourselves, but a game whose kind of primary mechanic is passive aggressiveness, what would that look like? Oh, God. Have you ever seen Mean Girls? It's a part of it. You could almost represent it as, like, dice marching down a battlefield. Um, you know, sort of a push and pull tug of war thing. In an abstract sense, it's a lot like World War II in some ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it kind of sounds like we've come full circle. Yeah. And this passive aggression is we're basically ending up with Dice Command again? Yeah. So cool. what, what, what I think we've come to the conclusion then is that Dice Command is more than just about war. It could be a metaphor for any conflict in your life, really. Mm. So maybe this is just a lot more profound than we were letting on to begin with. Like, I do play Dice Command very passive-aggressively. Um, and it's just sort of a gift I have, because I have played Dice Command. And Nicole, have you played Dice Command? Hmm. I haven't had the opportunity yet. Mm, okay, that's interesting. So, I, yeah, I do like to play it that way where, you know, like whenever the person I'm playing against, you know, takes out one of my enemies. And Was I that just... you practicing your passive aggression by telling me that that was interesting? <laughs> <laughs> Calling me out for not playing the game and then just switching just, away, kept the camera just, away? Just moving, moving on. Yeah, that was kind of my original intention with a bit, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought, I don't know if this is passive aggressive so much as it is just kind of like really dickish. But that's sort of the general flavor of our show, so I think it's fine. <laughs> it's a fine line. <clears throat> so, okay, so when I'm playing Dice Command, and like, tell me if this follows the rules or not. Uh, like so my part my 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 opponent will take a turn and then it'll be my turn and i'll you know i'll say something like oh yeah like it's fine you can move there and then they'll ask me if i want to still make my move and then i'll say something like no no it's fine you you just kind of like you just go ahead um i'll sit this one out like oh, I, you clearly need less time than me to, to make your decisions. I'll just I'll just skip a turn here. Like that's that's built into the rule book, right? Yeah, it's encouraged actually. Um, <laughs> extensively. So so I have a new pitch for the name of like the passive aggressive like a way that you're playing the game. I'm thinking ice command because it's like mm. a frosty feeling. And you just like deport yeah. a lot of immigrants in from the US. <laughs> I mean, I think I feel like that is a game that's being sold on some like MAGA website somewhere. I mean, and you can play Papers, Please, where you just demand like deny people at the border. Yeah, glory to Aristotle. Yeah, there you go. It is a real game. It's actually super good. It's a criticism. So. It is oh, actually okay. a very good game. It's a very it's good a, game. It's a beautiful game, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you okay. knew about it. I'm actually pretty happy about that. Yeah. It's it's actually a very fun game for torturing your friends who don't appreciate abstract games with and say, hey, man, like, do you want to try a game? And they just throw them in front of it. And they're, they say, what is this? And you say, this is a passport stamping simulator. And then you, <laughs> you have one less friend to worry about now. <laughs> like, it's great. You can, like you know, not feed your family and watch them die as you perform better at the passport office. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's or you can, you can fight the system and lose. No. Yeah. It's very, very good stuff. Mm -hmm. Not soul crushing at all. <laughs> well, I think we've solved it. I think we, uh, I think we can all look forward to the expansions we're gonna see to Dice Command and Nice Command. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for your spring launch of Nice Guy Command in which uh, your opponent plays like a really hot girl and you play, you kind of do her math homework and you do a lot of listening about her problems. And then you get to like halfway through the game, you get to open up your entitlement deck. And mm -hmm. then uh, that, yeah, then, then the fun really begins. Also one last pitch. What about lice command where one player plays as your mother putting that lice shampoo and like slowly picking the nits out of your hair and the other player plays as the lice that are trying to take over your head? Just a thought. I think that's I mean it might be too close to home for some, but I think it's pretty on point. 
Could be a one versus many sort of a asymmetrical yeah, yeah. battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> already thinking the design right here. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell Tyler's on board. I'll I'll message you about that later. <laughs> what if it could even be the mom? No. <laughs> Well, yeah, the mom is sort of like, sort of like the GM in that game, right? They're they're kind of coordinating everything, and everyone is just sort of like role playing a different louse. Mm. Right <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we got it covered. Um, I did promise that we were going to play some games. Uh, Nicole, did you bring any games for us to play? Yeah, absolutely. I brought um, a deck of cards. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get one of you guys to pick a card from my. Oh, that's not gonna work through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I. That's all I had. Absolutely killer! You love to see the preparation that goes into this show. <laughs> all right, so I've got an absolutely nightmarish game. Do we want to play it? Well, we have like ten minutes, so can we make it work? Absolutely. So this game is called Spoiler Roulette, and. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. So are, are you guys? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not promising it's going to be a ton of fun. That would be a spoiler. Mm -hmm. This is just a hypothesis that's probably wrong. So it's more of a misdirection. All right. So in this game, are you guys all seeing the same arrangement as me where I'm on the top left, Nicole's in the top middle, then we got Josh. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. All right. So we're going to go in, in order here where we'll move clockwise and yeah this this game is an elimination game so one person is going to name a, a movie a tv show some kind of media property a story and the next person has to spoil it if they've seen it which is sort of that's the russian roulette version of the you got the bullet and if you haven't seen it, you know, the gun just goes click, you pass it down to the next person. Does that make sense? How obscure uh, can I go with my movies? Well, the thing is, if nobody's seen it, then the game will never end. Okay, fair enough. So you want to name, a, you want to name a, uh, a story that the person after you will have seen so that they will have to spoil it, feel great shame, and then they'll be eliminated from the game. Oh, boy. Oh, here we but, go. But if, if no one's seen it, don't you get eliminated? Shouldn't... Yeah, I feel like that should be the way around it as well. If no one sees it, then then you fucked up and you get kicked yeah. out. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so it's not going to be someone eliminated every time. So if you if you name something they haven't seen, then yeah. you're just passing the gun down. Okay. Right? If the person If the person in Russian roulette doesn't, you know, get shot, you don't turn the gun back on you. All right, so I'm going to start with you, Nicole. Um, let's go with the first Lord of the Rings, because I know that's the only one you know. Okay. So, okay, so you're going to... I'm just saying what happens in it, or what's you the need spoiler? To, in the you need to spoil The Fellowship of the Ring for anyone who has not seen it. Oh, God, The Fellowship of the Ring. And that's on them at this point. They all run together. Boromir dies? There you go. That's a good one. That's a spoiler. That's a solid spoiler. Mm. All right, you're out. You're dead. Okay, Josh, you're gonna you're gonna name the next one. Uh, last house on the left. I have not seen that. Fuck. I was going pretty, pretty big with that one. Well, last house on. No. Well, you live another day, so I guess. Why don't you name something for Tyler to spoil? Um. Let's go internet classic. Uh, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. God. Which one is that? <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> the sixth one? Yeah, I think, right? I think that's, yeah, the, that's, yeah, the, I think that's, right, that's the right one, right? Yeah, 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 that's the sixth one. I think I'm that's pulling, the right one. I'm pulling back from like 15 years ago now at this point. but Is that the one where his uncle's a wolf? That's no. the third one. <laughs> you, yeah. you, spoiled, you spoiled the third one. So you just keep, you gotta keep getting Harry Potter spoilers until you spoil the sex one. <laughs> just keep digging deep. <laughs> I honestly I don't know. I've i I'm not a big Harry Potter fan and I tried watching them all like from start to finish and I didn't finish 
part two of the last movie. I just didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Yeah. No, All right. Uh, that's, sorry, that's not a good movie for me. <laughs> All right. Well, you're, now you have, you have a chance to eliminate Kelly now. Nicole, you're impartial. Do you believe him when he doesn't remember? Uh, yeah. Hi, bye. All right, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I gotta name a movie for Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be a book. It could be a TV show. Oh, okay. It could be like an Aesop fable. Um, how about a graphic novel and movie? Uh, three hundred. Oh man, uh, is it a spoiler to say all the Spartans die? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> although, although uh, you could just also just know the Battle of Thermopylae, and you'll be okay with that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, wait, let me let me try harder to spoil it. Uh, no, I mean, there's there's no real lot of nuance to it. I mean, you just you could say Leonidas dies. Yeah, Leonidas dies. All the Spartans die. Um, sorry to anybody who is rooting for the kid fuckers. So, <laughs> all right, and I'm very afraid to turn my camera off again. But all right, I'm out. I'm dead. All right, so I guess I'm up to try again. Uh, let's try something even more mainstream. Uh, fuck. Um, the Exorcist? A spoiler from The Exorcist. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm pulling, like, I'm, I'm trying real hard right now. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh... I I I don't remember. Like I remember her head spinning around. Like yeah, I don't know if that. But that's not really a spoiler. Yeah, I mean, that, really I'm pretty sure that was in the like. I'm, the yeah, I'm like 99 sure that was just in the marketing. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm 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 hooped. I'm over two. Oh well, I mean, I'm just doing I'm doing bad at this. Well, you're up next. <laughs> All right. Um. I mean, I know a hundred things that. I could get Tyler on. Uh, let's do... Star Wars Episode 5. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that one? The Empire Strikes uh, Back. No, you can't, you can't give him that. <laughs> But yeah, episode uh, Empire Strikes Empire Strikes Back. Um, you know what? I said it with Harry Potter, and you had to go with Star Wars. Star Wars and Harry Potter are like the really, two it's like the two big movie right. franchises no. that I'm like, was like not the... super into. I yeah, I'm like I'm like good. calling you out almost. You <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like episode five is like the one with like the big spoiler, so I like yeah. I like that one in particular. Mm, oh, that's the yeah. I'm your father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, does yeah. that count? <laughs> I don't know. Does that count? You bailed him out, so maybe he <laughs> yeah. survives. Yeah, let's let's go. With, let's have a chance to kick me out then. Here. All right. All right. Uh, here six moves. cents. Uh, six cents. Oh, um, Bruce Willis was dead. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, my friend. Um, Big reveal. Man, big spoiler. I'm like suddenly drawing a blank. We've talked so much pop culture. Um, what's like a... Oh, Spider-Verse. Oh, you want me to... Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to spoil it. Uh... They beat the bad guy. <laughs> oh, all on. of them. <laughs> there's, there's a. All right, all right. All right. The, uh, no, no, that's uh, not what no. I was. That's not what I was looking for. No. Um. So I, I gotta try and get you out now. Sure. I had one, and then I instantly forgot it as soon as you said Spider Verse. Uh. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, Mar yeah, uh, Marvel Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. It's the last one, right? Uh, no, okay, let's make it easier. Well, Infinity no, War. No, well, I, I can do Endgame. <laughs> I just need to remember which one. Uh, okay. 
Tony snaps back. Perfect. So now what? Do I have to make a movie and spoil it myself? <laughs> oh, no, hi, I just wanted to make you sweat for a while. Yeah. It's like, uh... <laughs>